You know, one of the problems with talking about racism in the con- <laughs> No, no, wait, no, don't leave, stop, don't, eh, no, I'm not doing an episode about racism. At least not totally and not in the way you might be thinking. I'm not going to do another angry lecture episode right after last week. So, look, just give it a chance, all right? I promise this is going somewhere interesting. Probably. Maybe. Theoretically. Okay? Okay. So, one of the problems with talking about the R word in the context of present day popular culture is that people tend only to think about it in an immediate sense. And in the immediate sense, racism doesn't often seem to have the kind of presence in movies, books, comics, or even reality that it used to. Which means that when it does come up, people tend to get a little defensive, often because they're sincerely unable to recognize how the overt racism of the past might still linger in both the pop culture fiction and actual real life culture of today. It's the other big, hey, why are we still talking about this topic, right? Well, let's investigate a small example of this. First, let's talk quickly about the actual language at play. Technically, racism should just be a benign term, right? Because the suffixes ist and ism, when applied to a word, generally means based on, characteristic of, etc. So racism and racist really just mean based on race. The reason it has an exclusively negative meaning in colloquial modern English is that the civil rights movement of the 20th century was primarily based around overturning race-based, aka racist, policies that were being used to unfairly exclude minorities from political and social mobility. Secondly, let's even more quickly talk about historical context, i.e. the inescapable fact that the above-described concept of racism as a social policy has been the default operating model of most human civilizations for as long as there have been human civilizations. It's important to remember that. The idea that ethnic equality, that genetic racial background has nothing to do with your tangible human worth is, in terms of human history, kind of a brand new idea. Hell, as late as the early 20th century, it generally didn't even need a name. Racism was just something everyone accepted. To put that another way, do you really expect every last remnant of this thing called racism that existed as an accepted truism for thousands of years to be totally cleaned out of our collective system now because we started fixing it maybe a couple decades ago? I mean, think about that. Now, here's an example. If I told you that an upcoming movie or video game took place partially in The Lost City, what would you picture? Pretty sure for most of us it'd be a bunch of crumbling architecture, usually in the jungle, maybe in the desert, but usually the jungle, covered with vines, partially submerged, etc. Now, in reality, so-called Lost Cities get found everywhere, but when most Westerners think of The Lost City, we think, well, this, right? So, why is that? Well, it's mostly because the concept of the lost city, or more broadly, lost civilization, is a trope of genre fiction first popularized in the late 19th century by authors like H. Ritter Haggard and Edgar Rice Burroughs, and subsequently repopularized in modern times by Indiana Jones, Tomb Raider, Uncharted, etc. And in those stories, the jungles of Africa and or jungles heavily reminiscent of Africa tended to be where this stuff got found. Why Africa? Well, because said genre originators, H. Ryder Haggard especially, were basing their fantastic tales loosely on real events. Very, very loosely, I stress. See, earlier in the 1800s, there was a booming period within the so-called Dark Continent for exploration by the forces of European colonialism. Now, colonial explorers in Africa were expecting to find strange animals and plants, but as they pressed deeper into the quote-unquote unexplored territory, they occasionally found something they could never have expected. The ruins of ancient cities, like this one, Great Zimbabwe. Finding this stuff, to put it mildly, blew their colonial minds. How could buildings, architecture, what looked a little bit like castles, be sitting here on a continent they believed was completely and utterly primitive? And most mysteriously of all, who built them? And where did they disappear to? Both the discoverers and the folks back home hearing about them were given to concoct fantastical theories. Was this perhaps Atlantis? Or Mu? Could these be the diamond mines of King Solomon? Who put this here? Now, are you getting what's kind of tragically hilarious about this in hindsight? I mean, think about it. What's so bewildering about finding evidence of human civilization? They didn't find this on the moon. They were in Africa. There's tons of people all over Africa. Eh, except they were black people, you see. So the concept that people living in Africa now might have built this or even descended from people who built this evidently didn't occur to the colonialists at all. What the? Black people building castles? Ridiculous. Ridiculous, I say. So pervasive was the commonly accepted racist view of European cultural superiority and African inferiority at the time, it was easier for them to believe that the lost ruins found in Africa and elsewhere were the remnants of some unknown, mysteriously vanished, super-advanced and presumably white civilization than it was to even consider that black Africans had at one point constructed the buildings. So, you see how this works? An overtly racist assumption, however common it was at the time, fires the imagination of a few, which in turn fuels a new genre of popular fiction for many more, which in turn gives birth to a genre trope that endures to this day and is so profoundly well entrenched in the Western popular psyche that we almost never even think or have reason to think about whatever unfortunate implications it might have brought with it into the present day.
Now, does that mean that every use of the Lost City cliché is tainted by outright racism? No, not really. Does it make, say, Indiana Jones racist? No, not real... Eh, well... Eh, okay, that's kind of a whole other can of worms. Does it make you racist if you enjoy the Lost City stuff in video games and movies, whatever? Of course not. I didn't lay all that out to make you feel bad, merely to illustrate a point. Much as we all like to pretend otherwise, this kind of stuff doesn't just go away. Its remnants linger on in the cracks and crevices of our collective popular culture, and only by acknowledging it, exploring it, and dealing with it in an intellectually honest way can we truly move beyond it. I'm Bob, and that's the big picture. <laughs>